Alright, so I didn't plan on having three New Vegas videos back to back, it just sort of happened that way. Granted, they tend to be most people's favourites, so I doubt many of you will mind. Anyway, as for today's video, it's time to figure out, can you beat Fallout New Vegas with the NCR Emergency Radio? Like many people, I have never once used the NCR radio, despite having access to it in multiple playthroughs. Essentially, it is just a way to summon an NCR soldier, ranger or supply drop to your location once every 24 hours. Meaning, the idea would be to have the soldier and ranger do any of the fighting going forward. Naturally, it sounds like a pretty simplistic run, which made me curious as to why so many people were suggesting it. Well, let's just say my initial thoughts of this being short and easy were quickly proven wrong. Now, with all that out of the way, let's begin. Appropriate radio name aside, my character build is fairly straightforward this time around. If I can't attack enemies myself, then any and all combat specials and skills would be useless to me. My special stats focus on maxing endurance, intelligence and even charisma, with strength, agility and perception lowered to 1. I then put the remaining points into luck, for whatever reason. For my tag skills I go with medicine and barter, for more and better healing supplies, as that's about all I'll be good for this run. I then took speech as a failsafe as let's not beat around the bush, the likelihood of the NCR support killing the legate is next to zero. Finally for traits I chose good natured and skilled for even more points to my primary skills. Free from the dock's grasp I run straight to chats to purchase some armour, I could have stolen it but my sneak skills in the single digits making it highly unlikely for me to do anything unnoticed this time around. Normally I would just head straight for Vegas and confront Benny, but that wouldn't really help me this time. Not only do you not need to deal with Benny when siding with the NCR, but I need to figure out a way to get my reputation with the NCR to accept it if I even want to get access to the radio in the first place. My very first idea was to bypass Prim and head straight for the Mojave Outpost and help Ranger Jackson with his ant infestation. Obviously, I cannot kill the ants, but if they just so happen to follow me into a third party's gunfire and die in the process, well that will be quite fortunate. Sadly though, this big brain strategy didn't end up panning out, as the ants wouldn't follow me far enough to the nearby travelling merchant, as after they went a certain distance, they would just turn back and run away. I tried luring the nearby Rad Scorpions down, but that was ultimately a fruitless endeavour as well, as they all decided I was still the biggest threat. Clearly this wasn't going anywhere, so to avoid wasting any more time I went back to the outpost and met up with Ranger Ghost, so that I could scout out Nipton for. Thankfully this quest doesn't require me to kill anyone, so after I talk with Grey Fox, I can head back to Ghost and obtain my paltry amounts of experience and rep points. At this stage I was wondering what the best course of action would be to get accepted. I thought about heading to Camp McCarran as the quests around the base, such as interrogating the Legion's soldier and disarming the bomb and the monorail, can all be done without ever fighting back. I decided they would be a last resort though, and instead continued on the path from Nipton and safely followed the road all the way down into Novak where I met Ranger Andy. While it may not be marked as a quest, helping Andy out by checking on the rangers at Charlie, and by that I mean their remains, gets me just enough points to be considered accepted by the NCR, meaning I can start making some progress with the namesake of this video. The ranger who gives you the radio will approach you when you are in or near NCR territory, so the fastest way for him to find me is by just travelling back to the Mojave outpost and waiting for a bit before he appears and hands it over. As mentioned before, you can use the radio to spawn in two different kinds of NCR backup, or radio and some supplies. Sadly the supplies usually just contain ammo, so nothing I can even use for the run. If they dropped off actual weapons then I could be a little more involved. Unfortunately though, that is not the case. Out of the help you can call in, there is no reason to not pick the ranger, as they have just over 200 hit points, as opposed to the regular soldier's 50, and they come equipped with a cowboy repeater, which is also a lot better than the soldier's service rifle. To put the ranger to the test, I brought her down to take care of the ants I had trouble with earlier. It was off to a good start when she quickly took out her gun and started picking off the nearby rad scorpions with ease. Whenever I brought her to deal with the ants though, we encounter a problem I did not anticipate. She appears to be scared of them. As soon as the ants had spotted us and began to attack, she would always just book it past them to get away. I thought maybe at first she was trying to create some distance between herself and them so she could pick them off with her repeater, but that was not the case. I even tried to raise my fist just in case she was in some kind of pacifist mode, but once again, nothing. Okay, so maybe she just can't fight ants. It's oddly specific if that's true, but it's certainly something we can work around. Anyone sided with the NCR will attack Legion on sight, so to make certain that she wasn't entirely broken, I ran over to the Legion camp for the booted quest, where they keep the powder gangers. As soon as the Legion are within sight, she starts blasting. She manages to take one down which looked promising, but as soon as the backup came in it was over for her as she just couldn't stand up to the assault of multiple machetes from every angle. One good thing to come out of this is that she distracted the legion long enough for me to go down and free the powder gangers, so while she may be dead, we did at the very least still finish the quest. 
After I outran the Legion, I just fast travelled to Prim and waited another day to call for another Ranger. The reason that I summoned her in Prim as opposed to the Mojave Outpost is that I was hoping to rescue Deputy Beagle. Thankfully, she seems fixed and makes fairly short work of the two convicts outside and doesn't run in fear like she did with the ants. Once again though, while the encounter starts off on a high note, it very quickly goes downhill. For some reason, she would not follow me into the hotel. I tried multiple different fixes such as waiting, loading old saves, and even tried to recall her with the radio, but again she seemed to be bugged and would not enter the building. At this point I just bit the bullet and decided to do some research, and by that I mean I checked what bugs were coming with the emergency radio, and as it turns out, there are in fact quite a lot. If you don't want to pause the video and read them all, let me inform you of the two major ones that proceed to make the rest of this run a pain to do. There's the bug that causes them to run away from enemies seemingly at random, good to know it's not a phobia of ants, and it can just happen at any given moment. And secondly, and perhaps even worse, is a bug that will just cause them to despawn whenever you enter a loading zone. This happened when I left the hotel, as the ranger was nowhere to be found. It's annoying, but I just waited 24 hours to call in for another one, except for whatever reason, I didn't have the ability to phone up another ranger. Okay, so for the time being, I just radioed in a normal trooper. They may be considerably worse than the ranger, but they are better than nothing. If I couldn't bring the NCR to the hotel to save Beagle, I at least wanted to try another quest, and given the low skill of the tripper, I figured something easy was in order, so I attempted the Ghost Town gunfight quest. Long story short, just like the ranger, he disappeared whenever I entered one of the buildings during the setup for the quest. I believe it was the saloon, not that it really matters or anything. So I just finished the quest by getting as much aid as possible, and letting the townsfolk resolve their problems themselves for a change. At the very least, Trudy brought her big hand to the fight, so they were never really in a position to lose. With that sorted, it was back to the outpost where I waited for a few more days, and eventually I was allowed to call for ranger assistance once more. Wanting to do side quests was clearly not going to happen, so I went back to Novak with the ranger, and just continued on the path the game expects you to follow. In a rare demonstration of the backup doing their job, I was able to watch the ranger effortlessly lay waste of the vipers who attack you near Helios 1. I made sure to fulfil my role as tank though by running in first to soak up the damage from the viper leader's grenade rifle. A couple of crippled limbs on my part is a small price to pay to actually be able to have the ranger do something for me in this run. The best part about this is that by having the ranger take out these vipers in particular, I now have a suit of reinforced leather armour. Thankfully we had no incidents running past the fire ants in the desert, mainly due to the fact they were kind enough to leave us alone for a change. It was just a short jog from here to Boulder City where the plan was to bring the ranger in to deal with Jessup and the cans in a less than peaceful way. Shocker, this didn't work because the ranger once again vanished off the face of the earth as soon as I entered Boulder City. That didn't really leave me with a lot of ways to defuse the situation how I'd initially planned, so I just had to fall back on my speech skill to end the struggle peacefully. Once I left I did the usual, wait and call for more help before heading north to the strip where we brought another friend along for the ride. We had a brief run in with the fiends outside of Camp McCarran, but considering they will almost always be eviscerated by the NCR standing guard there, regardless of the player's input, I can't really say that my specific ranger offered any real noticeable support. I wasn't just coming to McCarran to use the monorail, but having it on the map would be incredibly useful in the run, as according to the wiki, sometimes if your ranger gets lost, or despawns in my case, they may end up standing around the entrance to Camp McCarran. If this happens, I apparently can just fast travel back here and talk with them, which should recruit them back into my service. In fact, I got the test this out almost immediately, as once again, the ranger decided to dip once I boarded the monorail and arrived in Vegas. I was shocked to find that the tripper who got lost in Good Springs was also here, and thought for the briefest of moments that the game had decided to throw me a bone and let me have two followers to make my life easier. Sadly, it was not meant to be, as right after I brought them both back into my service, the ranger decided to absorb the lesser soldier into herself, which I can only assume made her much more powerful. Not that I got to see this power and work, mind you. Even though I didn't need to, I still wanted to head over to the tops and deal with Benny, as it's just something I tend to do in every playthrough, plus it's normally very easy experience. But even though for once in her life the ranger realised how to correctly use a door handle, she was now in her pacifist mode glitch again and wouldn't fight back against anyone, even when I managed to aggro Benny and bring him right up to her. Leaving the tops without the platinum chip means the NCR messenger won't approach me just yet. However, we can easily circumvent this by going to see House in the Lucky 38, as doing so will also trigger the messenger to come and harass you, allowing me to follow the NCR's main quest. While I could continue helping the NCR, this was where the run essentially broke for an extended period of time. Well, more so than it already has been breaking anyway. What I mean is that now the radio just straight up refused to work. Like before, the rangers were broken and continuing to get lost, but I could at the very least still call in more after a period of time, but now the radio wouldn't let me call in for anything else, and it wouldn't even let me dismiss any current soldiers I already had. I tried heading back to Camp McCarran and they weren't there either, so with nothing to do I just said to hell with it and made my way for Nellis to aid the boomers. 
Killing them is out of the question, so I got to work listening to their history, fixing up their patience, and solar panels. In retrospect, this is probably the only way this segment could have played out, as the boomers would have attacked the ranger on sight with the artillery, even if I was allied with them. This has been proven before by the time they attacked Victor for seemingly no reason. When all that was done, I went for a swim, left in an aeroplane, reported my success to Crocker, and still couldn't call for NCR support. Well, next up is the Kings, and without the Ranger's assistance, I will need to go about sorting this a long way, so it was off to deal with Oris. Nothing out of the ordinary here, other than when he did in fact shoot someone dead, who wasn't part of his plan. So I suppose he isn't a complete sham after all. Not that it matters, as all the King's horses and all the King's men take Oris off the streets and he was never seen again. As for the second part of the quest, well, it just involves walking back and forth between the followers, the kings and the NCR before you can strike up a truce and get an overwhelming amount of experience for such a simple task. I then use my one favour from the king to stop the violence in Freeside and report a job well done to Crocker yet again. Radio is still broken, so as for my two final tasks on the strip, I just antagonise the Omertas by refusing to hand over my zero weapons, therefore failing their quest, and then I waltz into the Lucky 38 and put my science skill to work as I hack into House's safe room. I realise that I haven't mentioned where my skill and perk points have been going yet in this video, and truthfully it's because it's pretty obvious. I maxed out my speech first as mentioned so I had something to fall back on, and then started putting everything into science once I realised there was absolutely no way I was getting the platinum chip. As for my perks, I have just been prioritising anything that increases my survivability, so for example, both ranks of toughness. Back on track, I cannot traditionally kill House, so I just cut him off from the mainframe. You could argue this is technically still killing him as the outside air will eventually do so, but I would argue the run failed long ago whenever all these glitches started to present themselves. With that out of the way, all that's left is the Brotherhood and Cans, and seeing how I already had a run-in with the Cans of Boulder City, I went for them first. On the way, I passed by Cook Cook as per usual, and for whatever reason, I decided to call in an NCR supply cache, just in the hopes I would luck out and maybe it would somehow contain a weapon. But instead, I got something better. This, for whatever reason, causes the NCR Ranger to appear, who originally gave you the radio, and he begins to effortlessly take out all of the nearby fiends. Being armed with a cowboy repeater, he is about as strong as the ranger you can normally call in, only with worse armour, but I'm not about to complain about getting some assistance. While he can take out the low level fiends, Cook Cook proves too much for him both times. That's not me saying I attempted this twice, but rather, whenever Cook Cook burnt him alive, he just immediately got back up with a new loadout and continued the fight. Unfortunately, he came back with a 357 revolver. If he had another repeater, he may have won the fight, but sadly, Cook Cook comes out on top and wins the set. Not being able to deal with Cook Cook, it was now off to Red Rock, where I would now need to convince the Cans to side with me. Dealing with Carl is simple enough as I give his diary to Papa and let the Cans deal with him themselves. Jack and Diane want me to save Anders from the Legion, which just has me run east through Camp Searchlight, where I can then stop his Jesus cosplay. For whatever reason, at this very moment, the Ranger decided to reappear, and because the NCR and Cans hate each other, she began trying to kill Anders. Luckily for me, neither of them are registered as hostile, so I can just fast travel away before she messes things up. As soon as she appeared, the ranger vanishes yet again, as I fast travel back to Good Springs to make my way to Melissa, who just likes to chill out in one of the most dangerous places in the world. I'm able to avoid the Cazadors by sticking to the high ground and being careful enough not to get trapped in one of New Vegas' many invisible walls. Normally, I would now be forced to avoid some death claws, but for whatever reason, the surrounding area was completely empty. I mean, it works for me, so before any of them can spawn out of thin air, I just met up with Melissa and convince her that the violent slavers are indeed bad. I can then return to Red Rock and convince Papa to leave when the Battle of Hoover Dam begins. For some very quick experience, I also help out Jack and Diane's drug running business as I head into Vault 3 to hand the shipment over to Motor Runner. That said, I have an ulterior motive for coming down here, and that was to grab the reverse pulse cleaner. The reason being, my next assignment is to get rid of the Brotherhood, and even if the radio was working properly, there is no way a Ranger with 200 health and a repeater can take out the entire Brotherhood bunker. You could make the argument that I can still blow up the base, but that would result in me killing them, which feels against the rules, so now I am forced to help them out so I can sign the truce with the NCR. Before heading to Hidden Valley, I travel back to Nellis in the Repcon Center to grab the Brotherhood holotapes, as well as picking up the one near all the centaurs in Black Mountain, so that I can complete the first stage of the quest when the Elder asks. After briefly being kidnapped, I convince Dobson to leave with the brokenness that is New Vegas' speech skill, and get to work helping the Brotherhood. As mentioned, I can hand over all the tapes right away, and therefore move on to the scout finding part of the quest. All of them are in locations I have previously been to, or at the very least have a nearby fast travel point, so nothing worth going over. The only stressful part of the whole thing was whenever I was being chased by a Casador and thought I might be a goner. Thankfully, a random nearby gecko appeared and came to my rescue. At this point, that single gecko has done about as much for the run as the radio has. Around this time, I tested the radio again, and to no one's surprise, it was still busted. I could, however, call for a supply cache. 
In the hopes that getting said cash may somehow fix the radio, I called it in and went to find it. Because the game likes to kick me while I am down, the cash decide to either spawn underground or just not exist at all. It was neither on top or underneath the bridge, and after looking around the area for a while, I said to hell with it and got on to the final task, which was of course finding the supplies in the vaults. As I already have the reverse pulse cleaner, I only need to head to vaults 11 and 22. Vault 11 is done and dusted in about 5 minutes as it's easy to just jump over the rats and mantises before swimming down into the depths of the vault to get what you need. Vault 22 proved to be more difficult, although not by much. The green trogs destroyed my armour within seconds of encountering them, but lucky for me I completed the quest only a few months ago and as such it's still fresh in my mind, plus I have the repair skill necessary to repair the elevator, making getting down to the living quarters to grab the cave access card a lot faster than normal. I then venture through the caves until I can get to the sealed room, grab the cartridge filters and can return to the Brotherhood. With the quest complete I can strike up a truce and move on to the finale. Also, for whatever reason I did not go through with things to get power armour training. Like I even went up to Black Mountain, fixed Rondo to get rid of the mutants and messed around with the tar, but just never went back to talk to the Elder about the training. Whoops. Ah well, it's not that important. What is important is guarding Kimball. Still no support, so for the first time ever I convinced Grant to allow me full access to the base so that once the President landed I could head up to the landing pad and inspect his vertebrate and disarm the bomb. I then warned Grant about it, allowing him to call off the speech and take the present to safety. Although for some reason he didn't do it until the Legion Sniper took out one of the President's Rangers. As for the engineer who usually rushes the President with a knife? Well as soon as the Sniper failed he just made a run for it, so I assume he got away safely. With that it was now onto the final mission, and somehow, only now, did the radio decide to work once more as I was able to call in the Ranger one final time. For some reason Hoover Dam is outside of NCR jurisdiction and the radio cannot be used here, so once the Ranger is dead, that's it. It was off to a good start, mainly due to the backup of NCR soldiers and Brotherhood that were along for the ride. The real blessing here was when one of the troopers was killed in the fight, he dropped his sniper rifle, and as soon as that happened, my Ranger picked it up and began taking the fight to the Legion. This of course is a significant upgrade over the cowboy repeater, and now she was tearing through the Legion like nobody's business. Sadly though, all good things must come to an end, and for some reason she decided to separate herself from the group and while trying to face down a centurion and a prime, she was disarmed, forcing her to go back to her repeater, allowing the two to quickly outgun her. I tried to bring the rifle back to her to no avail with some stim packs, as she wouldn't heal otherwise, but she wouldn't take them. Without any more help to call on, that's pretty much it over. I still ran through the Legion's assault all the way to the Legate's camp and just talked him down how you would in a pacifist run. I then approached the gate, met back up with Oliver, and can say no, I couldn't beat Fallout New Vegas with only the NCR radio. If the radio and rangers worked more than 20% of the time, this run may have been possible, or at the very least I wouldn't have had to do most of the run as a solo pacifist. That said, like I mentioned, I don't really see any way the rangers can take down the Legate even in a one on one fight, as they are just too weak. Regardless, that's going to be in this challenge video. If you enjoyed what you saw, consider giving the video a like, and if you're interested in more challenges in the future, feel free to subscribe to so everyone's videos are every week. My name is Nerbit, so I say everyone, I'll see y'all in the next video.